everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. So excited and feeling juicy to make this episode with you, for you, for all of us. Um, after releasing uh, my podcast, I hit my breaking point. Um, I got a lot of really powerful reflections from all of you, and um, a lot of questions, a lot of just activation <laughs> for you, for me, for the collective. And this is why I share these podcasts because I am also learning. I am also growing. I am also evolving and choosing who I want to be in the timeline. And it's so powerful if we're vulnerable to share these reflections so that we can keep bouncing this back, you know, back and forth so that it can keep growing together. So thank you guys all for that. And ladies, thank you guys and gals. Um, and today I want to talk about, you know, like updates and where I'm at, where Faraday and I are at and just so much learning, so much growing, so much healing. <sighs> I invite you to take a deep breath with me on that one. <sighs> and notice how you feel in your body right now. How are you doing today in this moment? Are there any sensations in your body? Is there anything that you would like to shift in order to feel more comfortable in this moment? And I'm just sending you all lots and lots of love. You're doing amazing. You're doing great. Keep going. Keep growing, evolving, choosing who you would like to be and who you are in the timeline. So just a heads up, I made a cut here. I went super into spirit and I put everything that I talked about at the end of this episode. So if you made it that far and you're excited to listen to, it's very good and very juicy. I just want to dive straight into the story of how this applies to my relationship, what's going on with Faraday and I. So let's go into that now. And so something I find really interesting is that you can have multiple layers of beliefs and sometimes they can cancel each other out. So for instance, on a core level, I know that my baseline emotion is joy. My baseline energy is this like little inner girl that's just so happy to be alive, so excited and wants to share this love with the world, right? And also, so that is like why, like over the last 10 years of me traveling to over 60 countries, I've always ended up in the best places physically, emotionally, spiritually. And then also I had this very big fear of men. I had this not trusting of men and my connection to them. And really I had this belief that whatever, whatever my connection was with a man, no matter how amazing it was, it was going to end up becoming a negative experience or I was going and I would have to leave because this was my core lived experience as a child like my, my dad was very abusive to my mom my mom ended up leaving him my ex-husband became an alcoholic and became sexually abusive to me and also I just wasn't in love with him and it just became this very codependent non-healthy relationship and I ended up leaving him. And so I noticed, like, so my connection to men was like, yes, this is beautiful. This is a nice experience. But then when it got to more of a committed level, I started um, having this, I started, it started hitting on this belief that I needed to leave in order to be free, in order to be freely expressed, in order to be free. Like it was like this very core belief that me as an alone sovereign being, like me as an individual, I was always good. And when I would get out of a relationship, when I would break up with a person, I would come back to my baseline, which was like joy and synchronicity and everything's flowing. And I just love making beautiful things in the world. And I'm always connecting to the right people and I'm building my community. And then I would fall in love with someone else. And then the story would start over. And it was this loop that was happening because I had this belief that was on top of my belief of, you know, everything's going to work out. So everything always did end up working out, but I kept getting into this loop of like something negative happening in my connection with men where I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel like I could be myself or fully expressed. And honestly, I was really tired of this loop. And I like consciously after I broke up with 
my ex Andy, who I built my community space here with, um, I told myself, I choose that the person that I connect to next, whoever I fall in love with next, is someone who is like me in the way where they are safe and their baseline emotion is also joy. Um, and I choose to feel like at home with them. So for me, the thing, the vibration I was getting on in preparation for, so I always do this, no matter what situation I'm going into, I create within my physical mind experience the vibration of what I want to receive in my lived experience. So I will meditate, I will dance, I will, you know, do rape, I will do whatever I whatever feels good for me to get into the vibration of opening myself to source and and connecting to my future lived experience. You can call this magic, you can call this energy work, you can call this whatever you want, it works. And so I could feel, something with me is when I connect to my soul and I connect to my higher self, I can feel what's coming next. And a lot of times I don't know how it will show up in the 3D and it's okay because that's the fun and that is the adventure that we're on. But I could feel that there was this beautiful man coming. This was like two years after I broke up with my last boyfriend. Throughout those two years, I was working on myself. I was having this, I was vibing because when I'm on my own, I feel safe. I feel at home, I feel joyful, and I and I was like, okay, I can feel all of these things on my own. I believe that this is possible, and now I choose to believe that I can feel all of these things within a relationship with someone that I love, within a dynamic with a man. What I didn't realize was I still had this belief that it wasn't safe with men, and that it would always work out in a way where I needed to leave. Because I did call this, I did call manifest, attract in, whatever you want to call it, this man in Fairday, where he really is joyful at his core. If you know him on a personal level, if you know him through his social media content, I will tell you that he is that all the way through. Like I have lived with him full time for a year and a half, and he really is with his baseline emotion of joy. And it's so beautiful to witness and to experience. And he's had a whole life of a lived experience of feeling safe in his body and feeling at home wherever he's at. And so when I was in this vibration, I I attracted him into my reality or we attracted each other into our realities because he could also feel me coming. He was taking a lot of DMT at the time and kept seeing me in all of his DMT trips. And... And when we first got together, it was really beautiful because we were both in this like super love bubble and like, you know, bouncing this energy back and forth. And then I hit the point where I started to feel that I couldn't be fully expressed in the relationship. I started to feel unsafe. And yeah, some of it was maybe the dynamic that Faraday and I had. And But a lot of it, I will say most of it was actually my belief system that this is what I have to do in order to be safe is I have to go be by myself. I need to somehow have this relationship end. And at the same time, I had a whole other belief that, or just a lived experience of like complete abandonment by my family and my community by leaving my religion. So there was this, if I really feel into it, like a belief that came from that was also that like either I need to leave or everyone's going to leave me. Like which one do I want to pick? Uh, because I hadn't had a lived experience of a connection with a man where it felt good all the way through and they were still in my life. Even my ex Andy, we decided to be friends after we broke up. And then for whatever reason, now he has completely blocked me on everything. Um, and that really hurts. That really, really, really hurts. Uh, and I know that it's his stuff. I know that it's, you know, it's his own things and he needs to work through that. And that's great. And I'm here with open arms and down to be friends. Um, and also I know a lot of this goes back to my core beliefs. So yeah, it's just been really interesting, like recognizing and honoring all of this. Um, because I hit this moment with Faraday where, yeah, there was stuff going on between us um, in the way that he was interacting with other women. This is like what I made that podcast about. Um, and then I spoke all of these things and I really let myself be heard like th for myself and for him and like 
and then spoke like I choose to be in connection with someone where it feels safe all the way through and where they are on the same page of me of of just consciously being aware of their energy and how they're sharing it with others. I know that men and women express themselves differently. They share their energy with other people differently. And that's okay. That's why we have the polarity and it's beautiful. And at the same time, I choose that within my partnership, we're on the same page of being conscious of our own energy and where it's going. And this was something that I brought up with Faraday um, and that I spoke about in that I hit my breaking point podcast because for me, this was triggering this, this belief in me that it wasn't safe to stay in the relationship and I needed to leave in order to be safe. So it was really interesting because it was like, yes, it was something that I consciously didn't agree with and didn't match my standards. And also subconsciously, it was validating this negative belief that I had that, okay, now it's time to go. I got to go. I got to go. Bye. Um, so something else that I want to say here is that we attract in people to date and to be in connection with because our soul wants to grow and to heal these things, right? To heal and to have these lived experiences of, you know, our souls want to experience everything. You can call it positive, negative, light, dark, whatever you want to call it. Our soul is here to have a rounded, beautiful, physical experience of, of, of experiencing it all through the different lifetimes that we are here in this 3D reality or in other dimensions. And I know this intuitively. I know that whoever comes into my vortex, whether you're my friend, part of my community, um, or my lover, then you are here because I we have reflections for each other. So Faraday had this. He was attracted to be in this dynamic with me because he wanted subconsciously to be reflected about this thing about his own energy and how he how he uses his energy in the world. And I was attracted into the situation with him because I needed to, I had the opportunity for growth. I always say that sarcastically because it's true and also I hate it. <laughs> like, okay, I don't hate it. Words are spells. Um, I just had someone say that to me when I was really triggered. Like, this is your opportunity for growth. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> but it's actually true. Like everything is an opportunity for growth. And when we, when we really allow ourselves to believe that and to feel that and to kind of step outside of the emotional, <laughs> maybe pain that we're in, and we're able to look at things from a empowered state, we realize, oh, there's always something to learn here. Even if it's I choose to have a different standard of who I have in my life. I choose to believe in myself more. I choose whatever. If Whatever you can learn from a situation means that it was a positive thing for you. If you are growing, if you are becoming a better version of yourself, a, a more authentic version, if you're getting closer to who you are on a soul level in this timeline, then it was a positive experience. Because we want to get to who we are on a soul level and then we want to grow. That is the that is the journey. That is the adventure of this life. And that's why I was frustrated because I had already hit this point in many different relationships where I didn't feel like I was growing anymore and I felt like I needed to leave and I felt unsafe for whatever reason. And the emotional dynamic and the physical dynamic, whatever it was, I just felt like I wasn't growing, I can't be myself and it's unsafe and so I got to leave. And this became this pattern that I was very bored of because my soul wasn't growing anymore. So when I brought this stuff up with Faraday and I hit my breaking point uh, and I said like, I I want one of us to move out and I need space. And it was kind of me starting this, going down this journey of, you know, the loop that I had been on before. And um, the difference between our situation now and all of my other previous relationships is we have a lot of amazing people in our community now that are woke (laughs) or awake. uh, They're spiritually awake. They're older. We call them like elders because they, they really care about Faraday and I, and they have a lot of lived experience of relationships, of how, how, uh, situations are going in, in relationships and how this, all is going to play out so like they can see our timelines you know outside of us and outside of our triggers and guide us and so through a lot of these reflections that are you know they have our 
our best interests at heart and they love both of us, Faraday and I were both able to realize the growth that we had, the, the opportunity to grow in, you know? And I'm really happy that Faraday on his own accord chose to recognize this and to, he's chosen in the last month since I, um, since all of this stuff happened to be monogamous with me um, energetically. So that was like what I really needed to feel. Like he ha is very good in the physical way and the sexual way of our dynamic when it comes to other women, but it was the energy that I didn't feel that he was like on the same page of like consciously being understanding of where his energy was going. And I told him, I said, you don't have to do this. If you want to go and like just be single and do whatever you want, you know, like maybe you need six months of just being single on the island and, and just having this fun, whatever, or like forever if you want to do that. But this is what I need, you know, I need to feel safe in this way. And it was really me asking, hey, I need the safe space in order to release this negative belief that I have that it's important for me to leave in order for me to be safe. And this is making me feel unsafe. Um, some people have reflected to me since releasing that podcast, like people writing comments on YouTube, that uh, this was me uh, attempting to control Faraday in order for me to feel safe and manipulate him and be in control of whatever he's doing with his life. It, everyone is allowed to have their opinions and reflections and I will tell you from my heart of hearts that if I was not evolved if I was not so self-aware then yes I can see that being true of me just being like I'm scared I'm going to stay in this loop and you're only going to do what I want you to do because this is what makes me feel safe but that's not who I am and so I I really just needed this temporary time of like we are you know like, because Faraday and I have been monogamous with each other in past, you know, in, in earlier times within our dynamic. But during those times, I was giving him a lot of reflections and he was, he was growing and he was choosing to uplevel himself. And then it hit this point in our relationship where I really needed the safe space. I needed to hold space. I needed him to hold a grounded space energetically, emotionally, for me so that then I could open up these negative beliefs and release them. And I really feel that this is what all of relationships are for, whether that's friendship, uh, lovership, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people call it karmic connections. It's, it's us choosing to be a safe space for each other to grow, choosing to, you know, times where we are grounded in ourselves consciously so that the other person can have this grounded, safe, loving reflection. So then they can <clears throat> realize that a lot of the, the stuff that they are projecting is a negative belief. And so for Faraday to choose, hey, you know what? Yeah, I could go off and be like Peter Pan boy and, you know, go and be, have my freedom. But he's like, I already have done that for most of my life. And I love you. And I want to just be here. Even if I will always be here for you. I will always be here. We made this agreement to always be here for each other. And I'm not fucking with that. I'm going to show up and be here with you and for you. And if this is what you need right now, I'm going to do it. And I was like, I just need you to know the only way this is going to work is if you're doing this for yourself, not for me because I can feel it if he's just doing it to make me feel better or, you know, like if it is a dynamic of him feeling controlled by me and it being disempowered, like it only will work if we're both in our power and we're both doing it from this grounded mountain place, you know, and this is how I was in the beginning of our relationship for him when he was going through a lot, uh, when his, so many things happened in the external world and I was just this grounded loving space for him like you got this I'm here for you work through whatever you need to do and then and then we bounce that back and forth throughout our relationship but this was like right now in the present timeline this is a big moment for where I needed I need I needed need a grounded loving reflection so that I can work through my stuff and he gave this to me and I'm super grateful I was at the waterfall yesterday like crying because I was just so grateful that him and I are so self-aware and consciously choosing love. Like I really believe I read something today that 
lust is a feeling. It's like this spark of connection. And, you know, you can go through your life feeling lustful for people. And it's like this temporary spark of connection. And that's, that's great. There's nothing wrong with love, lust. But love is consistent action over time. It's like, I'm here and I'm choosing to show up, of course, and we're talking about healthy dynamics where, you know, like people are not being abusive to each other, um, but where we're consciously showing up for each other and being these safe spaces for each other to grow. And I can really say that Faraday and I are this for each other. And I'm, and I'm so grateful for it because him choosing to be this grounded mountain for me in the last month has really opened up this belief that I was hiding so much in my self-conscious, even though it was like, after I would get out of a relationship, I would recognize it and then I would like put it away. Um, and so then I started to cultivate this belief within my physical mind that it is safe for me to be myself all the way to be fully in my power uh, and to be loved by the masculine and to be in a safe connection with the masculine. Because I've always had amazing connections with women. I've always like connected so well and so authentically with women because I never had any trauma around women. Uh, and then I've always had this like, you know, if I was basically, if I was sexual with a man, then it went into this box of eventually they're not going to be safe. I need to eventually disconnect from them unless I keep them at this very like avoidant, emotional avoidant. But if I was emotionally open and sexually open, it somehow would become unsafe. And so for the last month, I've really looked at this and I've really like incorporated it into my belief system and also through having this consistent action from Faraday of a safe place, of a loving, safe reflection. And I'm not saying it has been easy. We have still definitely had our triggered moments and he's definitely reflected back to me, you know, when I get triggered and I use my dragon energy for not nice, then he's like setting his boundaries and making sure that I see this reflection of who I become when I'm triggered. Um, and it's beautiful because I'm actually looking at it and transforming it and becoming a better version of myself, a, a more authentic version. And what I've been feeling recently is just so much joy, so much gratefulness for feeling safe, for feeling at home, because I was always feeling this when I was alone, but now, I, now I'm starting to feel it with Faraday, like on a subconscious level. I was feeling that consciously with him throughout our dynamic, but it is a very different thing to feel it subconsciously like within my nervous system within my body and within the way that I because there it becomes more of a lived experience and I realize that because of a lot of the trauma and abuse that I've experienced in my life uh, I have compartmentalized different parts of myself and the I think the whole goal is also to be this fully integrated soul being on the physical level this is why you have, um, there's a, there's a lot of somatic work that happens around this that I have been doing for many years around, you know, who you were in your inner child at nine years old, incorporating that part of you, like the different parts where you have trauma, what happens is you disconnect from yourself in that moment. So your nervous system becomes over overwhelmed. And then in order to not in order to stay in the timeline and be able to keep going, a lot of times we we um, disconnect from that part of ourselves and disassociate. And I have, I've done, they call it parts work, where you like literally bring different parts of yourself back into yourself and like honor the experience that you've gone through, work through the trauma, honor it, release it. And this one with men has been a very big one for me because it affects my life because I also am someone who loves very deeply and is very like open arms. So like I'll open my whole life to a man. And then when I hit this belief and in the past, I actually was attracting in men that weren't meeting my standards and that that weren't causing positive things in my life in the overall direction of where I was going. Right. And so it was a it was like 
because I had that physical mind belief that I would eventually need to leave and that someone wasn't healthy, I was attracting in a person that would validate that experience. And then before fair day, I shifted that belief. So I attracted in someone that didn't validate that experience. And then I hit this thing, this wall of like, oh, I'm creating it now. It's not, it's not happening externally because I created a belief that a deeper belief that I was safe and that I was attracting in someone who was like me on a soul level. And then I hit this, this wall of like, oh, if I keep going in this direction, I'm actually causing my own pain. And I chose to shift my direction, shift my energy. And oh my goodness, when you realize how much energy you spend because you don't feel safe, because you have a negative belief that it's not safe in the world or with in connection, I realize how much energy I got back because I'm more connected to myself on a soul level and your body, like, I was wasting a lot of energy not feeling safe. And that's a funny thing to say, but it's true. Like, I, I had this physical mind belief that it wasn't safe for whatever reason. And then I was putting myself in situations that my physical mind were deeming not safe. And then I was either running away or, you know, trying to create boundaries so that I was safe or literally needing to break up. You know, like, it was like... I was putting myself in this, I was, because of my belief system that it wasn't safe and I was still putting myself into those situations, I was causing trigger within my body of like, you know, red flags of like, it's not safe. I got to go. I got to go. And this is so much energy. Oh my God. It's so much energy to spend. And now that I don't need to spend that anymore, I have so much more energy in my life and it feels so good in my body. And I feel this like deep rest coming on um and this is like maybe not so everything I'm saying to you I feel that I experience a lot of these things on a very extreme level because I have gone through so much trauma in my life um and that's okay that was what my soul chose before I was fully aware that I was creating my reality um So you may experience all of these things on like a less extreme level. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. So that's an interesting thing if you wanted to share. Um, But I I will tell you that because I have shifted this belief, I feel so much more in my body. I feel feel more attracted to Faraday because now from a somatic level, like sensations in my body, he's safe. And so I was always attracted to him physically, but now I'm attracted to him emotionally and energetically it's like it's super interesting to observe and also I just feel like more more like alive more trusting that every like I've always I have I told you I have this core core belief that everything's always happening for me and now I realize it doesn't it can just be that all the way through like also with the men in my life and I really want to tell you that like as women as we step into our power more and more there is a lot of like collective trauma from the masculine and we can choose to keep um bouncing this back between the masculine and feminine and acting out and like having this energy be stuck in our body or projected onto the masculine in different ways that they're not even aware of and we're not even aware of consciously or you can just really own it and choose to create a different reality. And I find that to be really beautiful because I actually have a lot of current trauma, like from this timeline, from men and like the patriarchy, like man-made society, the society that is predominantly masculine and in the best interests of men. (coughs) And still I choose to create a reality where the masculine and feminine energy dynamic is balanced and it's safe and everyone has each other's best interests at heart and we are all coming from love and we are all creating this new earth vibration and I feel that it has been 10 years of me getting to this level and like through that working out these negative beliefs that have been put in me and the trauma that has been put in me and there's probably more to uncover And also this was a really big one. This was a really big one to release, a really big one to feel in my body. Um, And something else I was realizing was no matter how much 3D proof I had, how beautiful I was, 
what, how many, how much I've traveled, how much community I've built. I still kept hitting this, this feeling with men around me that I needed to prove my, I needed to prove that I was just as powerful as they were so that they didn't like use their power to hurt me. And I know this is a self-defense mechanism from being so disempowered by the masculine. And it's really beautiful to let that go and to realize that men, the men in my life that are showing up in my life right now in the timeline, <coughs> they have my best interests at heart. They are using their power to empower me. I'm using my power to empower them. It is going back and forth in a beautiful symbiotic way. And I see this with Faraday and I because he's given me all these reflections and given me a safe space to work this out. And I realize, wow, he really does have my best interests at heart. Like he's been saying this the whole time. And in many other ways, showing this. And then with this last one, with the energy with other women, he really has consistent action proven that he he gets it and that he understands and that he is on the same page as me in the conscious awareness of it. And my response to that is to heal my own trauma and then also to realize, oh yeah, a lot of this was coming from the dynamic of this, this like patriarchy of like, that this like ugh, putting it into words is hard what is coming into my mind is you know my parents obviously were monogamous and still because of the religion it's like the religion that I grew up in is like you cannot have sex outside of marriage you cannot have sex with even the person you're engaged to you have to wait until marriage to have sex so many boundaries around sex and yet my dad energetically would spend a lot of his energy giving it to other women within our religion. I remember one specific woman that that he was connected to, probably still to this day. And yes, physically they didn't have a romantic connection as far as I know. But he would always show up for her whenever she needed him. And then when we went on vacation one time with my family, my 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 dad, my mom, my two sisters, we went on holiday to New York. We grew up in California and we went to on holiday to New York City and he brought her with us. And I remember I was like probably 12 at this time. And I remember like her like trying to parent me and my sisters and me just telling her, you're not my mom. Like I was like so confused why she was there. And my mom was just so silent throughout the whole trip and I could feel that she didn't feel comfortable with the situation but my dad was in control of the money and and through our religion also in control of our lives like the men get to choose everything that's happening they have the final say literally within my religion it was like women can speak up for what they need but the man of the house has the final say and so from an energy dynamic and also a physical reality like my dad literally controlled everything and this was kind of imprinted in me that like men when they're in a relationship and they choose to share their energy with other women it was in a way that was going to be disempowering for the 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 primary partner because I saw how how uncomfortable and how sad it made my mom but she didn't have any way to speak up and and even if she did speak up nothing would change right so I realize that this is what I was doing with Faraday even though we were both were in this open relationship and we both were doing our best to be empowered in it and I don't and I and of course there was growth for him otherwise he wouldn't be attracted into this dynamic with me <clears throat> and he has done that growth and also I'm releasing this belief that that like men in connection with other women is going to be disempowering for me like Faraday in connection with other women is going to be disempowering for me now that I feel like we're on the same page consciously of everything in this in this way, of course there was more, but I mean the foundation of of how we interact with other people, and having the lived lived experience of him being um, so cool with me and with other men, um, and of course I'm doing it all in like a respectful way and being really like honoring his heart, and that's what I was saying when I hit my breaking point this time. I was telling him I'm like you don't realize like how much I do in order to make sure you feel safe when in, when I'm in connection with another man like how much I really do my best to always make sure Faraday knows that he's number one he's my primary partner he's the love of my life 
and nothing's going to fuck with that. You know, energetically, physically, sexually, nothing will ever change that when I'm in connection with another person. Um, and now that I feel like he's on the same page of that, that feels so yummy and so safe in my body. And I'm so excited to have the lived experience of a positive, um, like a lot of positive experiences with him in connection with other women because he deserves pleasure just as much as I deserve pleasure. And there's so many people out there in the world, so many women out there in the world, and maybe men, um, that he is meant to have these connections with in order for him to have more reflections and to grow and to up-level him and the other person. And then that only brings back positive reflections for my dynamic with him. It's like more experiences. And this is something that I've always said about openness. I'm like, you know, we don't stop our partner from having other friends. And when they have other friends, they, they're only bringing more experiences back into our dynamic because they're growing through those connections. And why is this different from romantic? And a lot of it is because we put through religion and through government society so much on the idea of monogamy that love romantic love can only happen between these two people and of course there's this whole thing about having kids and needing to have this secure foundation for children um but i'm talking about outside of a children dynamic um because i feel like that is a whole other podcast to make because i have a lot of friends who here on the island who are in open um marriages and they have kids and they are doing it in a way where everyone feels really empowered and that's a very specific conversation that I do not have a lived experience in maybe I will interview one of my friends soon so that if you guys are interested I can interview them and they can share about their experience because I feel like that's a whole other level of nuances um, of how to create a safe space for the children while the parents are being open um but between Faraday and I, I, I just, oh, I wanted to share all of this because, again, me sharing these podcasts are my own growth. And I'm so excited to look back and listen to these again in five years and 10 years and just be like, wow, I've grown so much. Oh, my God, that's amazing. And like, wow, I was really brave to share that while it was happening. Um, and I had a lot of you tell me recently, like, we... Um, like I had a couple people reach out that I don't know and I love all of you um, saying like Brittany why are you not famous like why like these are such hidden gems of like podcasts and content that you share and um, and I will share a secret with you that I know I've always known since I was little that I was going to be famous one day and I th- I really feel that my soul has chosen for me to have that happen when I actually could hold the energy going through because um, it's a lot of eyes looking at you. And if I was, I w- I chosen to be in a certain place, which I feel like I'm hitting now, this vibration, this groundedness, and this certain knowingness of who I am so that when more people are looking at me, I can just, get, just keep shining brighter. I'm not going to get confused on who I am and it's only going to be a more positive experience. And also, I have known a lot of really famous people and and something that they have shared with me is that it's really important to know who your crew is, who the people that love you are before the fame hits. Because once the fame hits, um, you know, people sometimes get caught up in their own ego and their own head of what they can get out of the dynamic when you're famous. And that has always stuck with me. Like I've, I heard that when I was a teenager from someone that was famous and I was like, okay, I need to make sure I have my people around that I are like my soul family, like the people that know me and have grown with me through many years and understand who I am and what my mission is. And also, and I, I feel like I have that now. And also I, I've always known that I was going to be famous and I wanted to make sure that I was using that energy and that reach and all of that power that is accumulated for the collective and for doing something beautiful in the world. And I really feel that I have honed in on this new earth vibration, this community, this like we can literally change the world if we just get together on a similar vibration and have a shared goal. And 
I have seen it in action. I have experienced it. I know it to be true on a soul level and I'm here for all of it and I'm so excited for it. So if you are listening to this right now, you can say that you were one of the first to hear me before I got famous, that you were part of my inner community because you're here for all of it and for all of the growth. And thank you all for being so supportive of of the journey that I have been on thus, thus far. And I really uh, invite you to share this with your friends, anyone who you feel is, um, who could also experience this vibration, this reality. And, um, and also just share comments on YouTube or Instagram, whatever feels best for you of how this lands for you. And if you have more questions, Um, because I love to make podcasts like if a bunch of people are asking the same question that means the collective really needs to hear it the and I am happy to through my own lived experience and through connecting to my higher self channel whatever is coming through something to know is that every time I I start a podcast I always ask my higher self to please channel through me whatever is in the best intention intentions of everyone who's listening and then usually like I cough a lot uh, because I feel like it's like clearing my energy field. And then I have, I usually have a couple notes and then I end up saying most things completely different. Just like whatever needs to come out is what's coming out, you know? Um, but then it's always what, whatever is meant to be. So I feel that this is, I feel complete with this one. And I just want to say I'm like really grateful for all of you and thank you for being part of my timeline and thank you for sharing your energy with me in whatever way feels best for you. And yeah, I'm excited for the lived experience of whatever happens next. And I'm excited for all the beautiful transformations of who I choose to be in the timeline and and all the beautiful things that we can create together. Because I really feel that we are here on a mass consciousness level to shift from the vibration of fear to the vibration of love. And when we do that on a mass consciousness level, we are automatically in the vibration of abundance and connected to ourselves, to each other, to the earth, to our higher selves, and everything is flowing from there. So like the more of us that can get on that vibration that choose the vibration of love, the more that we will shift to the reality, to, to the lived experience of our external reality reflecting the best interests of everyone around us and the earth and just love, love, love. <laughs> and like I said, love is consistent action over time. Of course, it's a feeling in our body and also in order to know who we are on a soul level it's also actions it's also who we choose to display ourselves as and no one is perfect and that's what's beautiful because we're always growing if we have the intention to keep growing to keep coming back to love and to be grounded in the love and the knowingness of love we just keep creating beautiful things it's so powerful i want to end with um this part in the conversations with God that's talking about sex because I found this really powerful it says sex is joy and many of you have made sex everything but joy sex is sacred too but sex and joy do (laughs) but so sex is sacred too but joy and sacredness do mix they are in fact the same thing and many of you think that they are not Your attitudes about sex form a microcosm of your attitudes about life. Life should be a joy, a celebration, and has become an experience of fear, anxiety, not enoughness, envy, rage, and tragedy. The same can be said about sex. You have repressed sex even as you have repressed life, rather than fully self-expressing with abandon and joy. You have shamed sex even as you have shamed life, calling it evil and wicked, rather than the highest gift and the greatest pleasure. Before you protest that you have not shamed life, look at your collective attitudes about life. Four-fifths 
of the world's people consider life a trial, a tribulation, a time of testing, a karmic debt that must be paid, a school with harsh lesson, lessons that must be learned, and in general, an experience to be endured while awaiting the real joy, which is after death. It's a shame that so many of you think this way. Small wonder you have applied shame to the very act which creates life. The energy which underscores sex is the energy which underscores life, which is life. The feeling of attraction, an intense and often urgent desire to move toward each other, to become one, is the essential dynamic of all that lives. I have built it into everything. It is inbred, inherent, inside all that is. Oh, it just keeps going. I think I'll end it there. Basically, love, sex is joyful, it's sacred, it's something beautiful to be shared and expressed in a way that we feel safe. And it is our sacred life force that we share with people that we love. And if we do it with this energy, it only creates more and more beautiful things. Okay, that is it. I love you all very much, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. So here's the bonus material at the end. It goes super deep into spirit and I hope you enjoy and have an amazing day. <clears throat> I've been reading this book, Conversations with God. I actually just finished it and the last couple chapters are so fucking... I mean, they're whole, the whole thing is really powerful. The last couple chapters is what I've been reading. So of course, for me, I'm like, wow, this is so great. Oh my God, I need to share this with everyone. Uh, so if you want a copy of this book conversations with god please reach out to me and i will send you a free pdf i just shared it on my instagram today um <clears throat> i want to read this part because this has really been super activating for me it says um you were not meant to ever die your physical form was created as a magnificent con convenience a wonderful tool a glorious vehicle allowing you to experience the reality you have created with your mind, that you may know the self you have created in your soul. <sighs> the soul conceives, the mind creates, the body experiences. The circle is complete. The soul then knows itself and its own experience. If it does not like what it's experiencing or feeling, or wishes a different experience for any reason, it simply conceives of a new experience of self and quite literally changes its mind. Well, that is a lot of truth right there. Um, I want to break this down and, and then apply it into my current reality because um, this has been really um, amazing for me to experience within my psyche. And the, the, what I really liked, it said the soul conceives, the mind creates, the body experiences. And if I were to put that into my own world's words, it would be that our soul, you know, us, that is the bigger version of us outside of this physical experience that knows all and <clears throat> is eternal. It chooses for us to be born into the timeline that we were born into, to have the experiences that we were meant to have, to be attracted to the people that we're meant to meet in order to grow and have these in order to, okay, so the soul conceives. So the soul is us, the bigger ver part of us that's outside of our physical mind that is eternal. It chooses for us to be born into these situations. And through those situations, our mind creates this sense of self, right? So like who you were born into as your parents, your family, your life situation, this has a huge factor on who you view yourself as and who you choose to be in the timeline, right? And then who you create yourself as in that physical mind perspective is what you end up experiencing. This is why people are super into law of attraction and affirmations and, you know, getting to the core of having our mind shift from one belief to the other of who we believe that we are so that we can experience this, right? Um, it doesn't need to be as hard as a lot of these um, what I'm, what I'm personally experiencing and realizing is that for many thousands of generations and millennia, you know, your soul is chosen to be one thing in the timeline and then you experience that and you, you view yourself through the sense of self. But as we are going into the transformational age, 
you can shift who you are so many times within the timeline because we're becoming consciously aware of this. So once you are understanding the game that you create who you are through your physical mind, and then that's what you experience in your reality, suddenly you can be self-knowing of, of your soul while in the physical body. That's like, whoa, 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 whoa. So you can be like in connection with your higher self. And this is what I do when I meditate, when I dance, when I get into this, basically letting my physical mind go and opening the channel between me and my higher self. And then so many downloads come in of like future experiences that I'm meant to have, future connections I'm meant to have, and also this vision that my soul has already decided I will be part of uh, unfolding in the timeline, which is building this new earth community. This is what I see every time I connect to my higher self. So within my physical mind experience, like within this physical 3D experience, I'm actually connecting to my soul. So most people don't get this until after their physical life experience and they're in their soul review. Like, you know, like after you, after you die, your, your soul, you connect to your higher self, you go back to you, you know, you connect back to the bigger part of yourself and then you understand, oh, this is why I chose to be born here. This is why I was attracted to this person to grow in this experience. And you understand all these things. Right now in the timeline, we are choosing to understand all of this while we're still in our physical bodies, which is like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. And also it's a lot of energy to hold going through our bodies. So I really invite all of you to be grounded in this and to know that you're only meant to know as much as you can hold the energy going through your body. I notice a lot of people on Kopan Yang start waking up to this reality and then they start taking a ton of psychedelics and they, they're in this knowingness, but they're not able to integrate it into their body through a lived experience. So for instance, if you are connecting to your soul and then you're, you know, you're taking a lot of psychedelics and you quiet your physical mind and you're just in this knowingness, but then you're not able to integrate it into your physical mind because your physical mind is what creates the lived experience of everyday life. So people who are, I call it getting lost in the sauce, they, they want to keep skipping the step of their physical mind to create. They want to just be in the knowingness of the, what their soul has chosen for them, but they're not able to integrate it and have a lived experience of that so if you're just wanting to be in the knowingness and to be you know what your soul has created and all that is you wouldn't be in this physical body having this you know physical experience you would just be staying in spirit so there is a really important part of having a lived experience through your physical mind in order to really grow as a soul. Because when you're in spirit, everything is, everything you think of is immediately and is created. Like there's no growth because there's no this and then that. That's why we create time. That's why we have this linear experience because we get to experience the before, the during and the after. And that's really beautiful. And this is what our soul craves. So it's like, don't skip the step, you know? Um, it's, but it is also important to be in the knowingness because for me, I have asked myself a, a lot of times, um, why did my soul choose to have me experience so much pain and trauma, you know, like in the timeline? And um, at first I was like, oh, this is because, you know, otherwise I wouldn't be making this podcast. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing all this work for people, you know, like for the collective, like sharing my experience and I thought, no, you know, Faraday's timeline, he had a really great childhood and amazing life. And he still choosing to be this leader for the new earth and this leader for the collective. And I, then I was like, okay, so, you know, and I don't believe, I don't believe that you have to go through pain in order to, you know, in order to grow, in order to become who you're meant to be in the timeline. So I was like, why did I go through all this stuff? And why did I have to experience all this, all this pain? Um, and then I came to the knowingness that it's a very delicate balance of who your soul, you know, what your soul chooses for you to go down into the timeline. Like you choose to forget who you are on a soul level. And it's in that waking up, in that remembering of who you are on a soul level 
that you shift your physical mind to what you believe and then you shift your experience, right? We're always going to go home to spirit, to who we are on a bigger level. But in this temporary life experience, it's really important that we get to the core of our belief systems of what we believe in our physical mind. So this is the integration. This is the lived, because then it becomes a lived experience. If you can get to the core of who you choose to believe you are, then you will shift your physical reality experience to experience who you choose to believe you are in your physical mind. And this is what, you know, so many um, philosophers have realized on like this esoteric level. And I'm trying to break this down into very practical ways so that you can apply it in your life. This is what I find really interesting is like, when you're in the knowingness, you know all of these things. They, there's no there's no words. It's a vibration of knowingness. And also we're having this physical experience. So, so many are asking, how do I apply this in my actual life, right? And this is what I realized when it came to, you know, who I chose to be in the timeline and what I put myself through from a soul level, right? Like I didn't physic in my physical mind choose to be abused as a child and be born into a cult and to be suppressed and have all of these terrible experiences as a child um, by men who are using their power for bad, right? And yet I have so much lived experience of what that is like and why it is important to share these stories and to share with you that, hey, from a physical perspective, I was born here. And I've chosen throughout my life so that because the way that I shifted all of this was I got to the core of my beliefs of who I was. And I shifted who I believed I was and then I had a physical experience that reflected that. So I'll give you an example. When I was leaving my cult um, at 24, I, I had never lived in the world outside of my cult. I didn't, I didn't actually know what it was like in the world. I'd read a lot of books and of course I lived, I didn't live like on a commune. I lived, you know, with people who were not in my, I lived in a neighborhood with people who were not in my religion, but I was in the emotional reality bubble and the mental, physical mind bubble of my religion. Like I didn't hang out with people outside of work that were not part of my religion. So everything was confirming this bubble of reality and the belief system that went along with it. On a soul level, I knew that there was something more out there. And so that got through to my physical mind and I didn't, I didn't have any lived experience that life was better outside of my cult because I hadn't experienced it yet, but I believed and therefore it got through to my physical mind that, that I could not do this anymore, the, the life I was living and that I wanted to experience what it was like to not be in this belief system. I believed that I deserved better. I believed that as a woman, I deserve to have rights and have power, sovereign power over my body and over my life. And so I chose to leave. So that was the connection to the lived experience. Because I had those beliefs, I no longer could, could stay there anymore. Even though the outside world was foreign to me, it was very scary. And honestly, I had no clue what I was doing or like what I was gonna do with my life. I just knew that I needed to get out. And so I lived the experience of leaving my cult and going on the adventure of whatever happened next. And because I had this belief very deep down, like one of my core beliefs is that everything is happening for me. Everything is going to work out in a positive way. 